The Embraer E2 is a stunning plane. Its slender frame, sweeping wingspan, and massive engines make it one of the most unique looking planes in the sky. But as it stands today, you'd be hard pressed to actually see one in person, since only 86 units have been built so far. But that shouldn't be the case for that much longer. Since 2020, Embraer has doubled down on E2 production, and its backlog has grown by a whopping 40%. With the program finally gaining steam, and an arms race for new planes emerging, it begs the question, who will be the next customer of the Embraer E2? Let me explain. Now before hopping into it, I wanted to share a little bit about my experience traveling for this channel. In the last year, I have gone to the Paris Air Show, I've been to the Dubai Air Show, and next month I'm going to be going to Singapore for the Singapore Air Show. Traveling to these air shows has been absolutely thrilling, but at the same time, I'm usually traveling alone and I'm traveling really, really far from home. It can make these big adventures feel kind of daunting and intimidating, when you consider that I'm working upwards of 18 hour days when I make it on site, it definitely gets stressful. That's why I want to talk about BetterHelp, today's sponsor. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that's there for you no matter where your adventures might take you. They have a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists who offer a wide range of expertise, and all of them can offer you help through your phone or computer. Getting started with BetterHelp is super easy. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire, and then you're usually matched with a therapist within 48 hours. Scheduling sessions is also super easy, and if for whatever reason your therapist just isn't quite a fit, you can always change to a new one free of charge. Therapy's been an important tool for me to help manage the stresses that come along with not only this travel, but also with managing and running my own business. And if you want to help support my channel and my work while also supporting your mental health, you can go to betterhelp.com explains to get 10% off your first month of therapy. In order to understand who will be the next E2 customer, we need to understand the value that it brings to airlines. The E2 is the next evolution of the wildly popular E-Jet, an aircraft family that sold nearly 2,000 units to date and the E-2 improves upon its design in a number of meaningful ways. Its aerodynamics have been optimized around a re-engineered wing, a smaller horizontal stabilizer, and new advanced materials. And its power plant has been upgraded to the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan, an almost laughably big engine that delivers double-digit fuel burn improvements. According to Embraer, these changes have made the E2 family about 25% more efficient than its predecessor. This not only means it's more economical, but it also helps to boost its range. For instance, both the E190 and E195 E2 can fly around 15% further than their forefathers. This unique blend of size, efficiency, and range has put the E2 family in a growing class of aircraft that are fairly small but can go the distance, allowing it to open up long and thin routes. Okay, so now that we have this context, let's talk about who might be the next suitor for the jet. And when you survey today's commercial landscape, two strong contenders immediately jump out. First, let's talk about Saudia. The Middle East is a potential goldmine for the E2. At first, that might sound a bit odd. After all, 90% of the planes based in the region are of the wide-body variety. But frankly, that's exactly why the E2 is needed. According to Embraer, today's flights between Middle East destinations experience load factors under 70%. And that can largely be attributed to the heavy reliance on wide bodies, which are just too big for most of these routes. By picking up smaller jets, Middle East carriers could right-size their operations, better fill their aircraft, and make more money. Of course, there are several single-aisle aircraft that these airlines could choose from. Not only could they buy the E-2, but they could also buy the A220, 737 MAX, A320neo, and even the C919 if they're feeling frisky. But out of all these options, the E-2 might be the best suited for Middle East operations. Remember how I mentioned that the plane has massive engines? 
Well, it turns out that their diameter is nearly three quarters the width of the entire airplane cabin, which is proportionally bigger than any other commercial jet. And this size advantage can help Middle East operators in three key ways. First, it gives the engine a high bypass ratio. That means that the majority of the air that enters the engine will bypass the core. This is absolutely critical for Middle East carriers, because the sandy and dusty environments that they usually operate in can quickly degrade an engine's internal components. Second, the engine delivers a high thrust-to-weight ratio. For some context, the engine that powers the E195E2 has nearly the same thrust level as the A22300, but the E2 is a few tons lighter. The upshot is that the engine doesn't have to work as hard over sustained operations, which should help preserve the life of the engine. Third, this high thrust-to-weight ratio, combined with the E2's massive wings, gives the plane more effective lift. A plane's ability to generate lift is often compromised by the hot and humid climate of the Middle East, which can lead to service disruptions. But this shouldn't be an issue for the E2. Okay, so it's clear that Middle East carriers need smaller planes, and the E2 is an appealing solution. But why would Saudia specifically be the next in line to buy the jet? Well, Saudi Arabia has massive aviation aspirations. Unlike neighboring countries like Qatar and the UAE, Saudi Arabia has failed to become a major aviation hub. But the country is trying to change that. In the last year, both Saudia and Riyadh Air have bought hundreds of aircraft worth tens of billions of dollars. But despite this shopping spree, it'll still be very hard for Saudia to steal market share from the likes of Qatar and Emirates, especially when it comes to being a stopover between Europe and Asia. Those two carriers are juggernauts, with the scale and capital needed to fend off competitive threats. So if Saudia wants to better establish itself in the region, maybe they should try to capture more of the market for inter-Middle Eastern routes. Remember, Qatar and Emirates still fly mostly wide bodies on these missions, which leads to lower profits. And seeing that Saudia is a historical Embraer operator, and at one point owned the largest Embraer fleet in the region, this could make them a solid contender to bring on the E2. Okay, so Saudia is candidate number one. Now let's turn our attention to candidate number two, who has a very different and arguably more interesting use case for the E2. That would be British Airways. Everyone knows that London has a problem. Its airports, most notably Heathrow, suffer from major overcrowding, and there are scant ways to fix this congestion. Environmental concerns, regulatory hurdles, and a general lack of space in London has made it difficult to expand airport infrastructure. Now, on the surface, this doesn't seem like a great market for the E2. After all, it's a relatively small plane, smaller than the A320s that British Airways already flies into Heathrow. If BA downgaged to the E2, the jets would take up the same number of slots while carrying fewer passengers. This would make congestion worse, not better. So why is BA such a strong candidate to buy the E2? Well, to find our answer, we have to completely ignore Heathrow and instead look at London's other airports. Specifically, we ought to take a hard look at London City. London City handles the fewest passengers out of London's main airports. And that's for a very good reason. It's tiny. It has a short 1500 meter runway, limited ramp space, and a challenging approach that takes planes right through the heart of London. As a result, only small planes can operate in and out of the airport. Because of these constraints, London City has done little to alleviate congestion. But the E2 could change that. In recent months, the E195E2 received approval to operate at London City. This makes it the largest and heaviest jet in production that's allowed to fly there. Now, today, British Airways uses its E-190s to serve London City, which carry just 98 passengers. By comparison, the E-195E2 can carry up to 146 passengers. That's a near 50% increase in capacity. If BA makes the switch, 
not only could it help them generate more cash flow, but it could also help the City of London to cope with growing demand. Now, as a quick aside, BA isn't the only airline who could use the E2 at London City. KLM, who is already an E2 customer, and Lufthansa, who is currently evaluating new small aircraft, are also common visitors at the airport. They could also increase their capacity with the E2. But BA simply has a bigger presence at London City, both from passengers carried and routes served. And considering the E2's improved range, it could help BA to unlock new, never-before-possible missions. Ultimately, BA just has a more pressing and immediate need for the jet. At the end of the day, both Saudia and British Airways make compelling cases for being the next E2 customer. And what I think is really interesting is that they need the jet for very different reasons. I think this is a real testament to the E2's versatility. And thanks to that versatility, the E2 program seems to have a bright future ahead, no matter who the next customer ends up being. So what do you guys think? Do you think one of these two airlines will be the next E2 customer, or is there someone else I'm missing? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and by the way, I had the chance to sit down with Embraer's VP of Marketing and Strategy at this year's Dubai Air Show. We gotta talk all about the future of Embraer. That conversation is gonna be published on my channel very soon. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.